Hi everyone, this is Shirley from EC department and I'm going to talk about filtering of long data sequences using overlap save method. Why do we need filtering of data sequence? In practical applications involve linear filtering of signals and the input sequence X of N is a very long one. Linear filtering is done through DFT and DFT is only performed on a block of data. This block of data must be limited in size because the digital computer has limited memory. So the input signal sequence must be divided into a fixed length of blocks before processing. As we are using linear filtering, successive blocks can be processed one at a time using DFT and then the output blocks are fitted together to form an overall output sequence. As I have said before, our input sequence is first segmented into blocks of data and each block is processed using DFT. Now we use inverse diskit for your transform to produce the block of output data. These blocks of output data are then fitted together to form an overall output sequence which is similar to the one obtained if our input sequence is processed using time domain convolution. To perform this, we use two methods. The first method is overlap save method and the second method is overlap add method. We are going to study about overlap save method. In overlap save method, the first step is, as we know, our filter consists of impulse response H of N and we are going to determine its length as M. In the second step, we are going to determine the length of our input sequence X of N as N. In the third step, we are going to determine the length of our new data as L and to determine it, we are going to define the size of our input data block as N equals L plus M minus 1, which means that our data block consists of M minus 1 points of the previous data followed by L points of the new data to form a data sequence. In step 4, we are going to increase the length of our impulse response H of N by 0 padding. We are going to add L minus 1 zeros to it. In step 5, we are going to multiply the two endpoint DFTs H of K and X of K to yield our Y of K. And Y of K is given as H of K into XM of K. As I have said before, our data block has length N in which consists of M minus 1 points of the previous data followed by L points of our new data. The first M minus 1 points of Y of K are corrupted due to aliasing and they must be discarded. The last L points are taken into consideration and they are same as the result obtained using linear convolution. So now finally, our Y of K equals H of K into XM of K. As I have said before that, the M minus 1 point of each data block are discarded due to aliasing. To avoid the loss of data due to aliasing, the last m minus 1 point of the data record are saved and then they become the first m minus 1 point of the next record. When we start processing the signal, the first m minus 1 points of the first record are set to 0 in case of input signal block. In case of output signal block where we use the inverse discrete Fourier transform, the first m minus 1 point of each output signal block are discarded due to aliasing and the remaining are fitted together to form our overall signal sequence which we get using linear convolution. Now let us understand this overlap save method using an example. A signal is given to us as x of n equals minus 3, minus 1, 0, 1, 3, 2, 0, 1, 2, 1 and h of n equals 1, 1, 1. So, in overlap save method, the first step which we do is determining the length of our impulse response h of n. So, now h of n, the length is m equals 3. The next step is determining the length of our input signal sequence. So, let us assume that our input signal sequence n is equals to 5. Now, the third step is determining the length of our new data l. Now, we know that n equals l plus m minus 1. By substituting the values, we get the value of L as 3. In the next step is 0 padding the impulse response signal. Now, L equals 3. So, L minus 1 equals 2. 
So two zeros must be added to our impulse response signal and H of N equals now 11100. The next step now is discarding the M minus 1 points of each block. Now our X of N as I have said before, the M minus 1 points of the first record are set to 0 and the remaining are taken from the input data sequence. So since M equals 3, M minus 1 equals 2. So the X1 of N, the first two elements of X1 of N are 0 and the remaining are taken from the input sequence. For X2 of N, the M minus 1 points are taken of the previous data. For X1 of N, the last elements are minus 1 and 0 which are taken as the first two elements of X2 of N and the remaining three elements L equals 3 are taken from the given data. Similarly, we do for X3 of N and X4 of N. The next step, we are going to perform the convolution of the input signal and the impulse response. So, YK of N equals XK of N into H of N where K equals 1, 2, 3, 4. By performing this operation, we get y1 of n, y2 of n, y3 of n, y4 of n as follows. As I have said before that, in the output signal blocks, the first m minus 1 points of each signal block are discarded. Since over here are m equals 3, m minus 1 equals 2, the first two elements of each output signal block are discarded and the rest are fitted together to give our overall signal sequence. So now our y of n equals 3, 2, 2, 0, 4, 6, 5, 3, 3, 4, 3, 1. Thank you.